This is the repotting season. So we're in the middle of repotting some trees. This is the big larch that came back from Wisley the other day. And I hadn't done this for maybe 10 years, so don't laugh. Some trees can stay in the pot for a long, long time and they don't seem to suffer. Look at it, it's in the pink of health. And we're going to work on it and refine it with a few gins here and there. It came out of a very small pot. Have you got the original pot? Was it that one there? Well, I'll show you the pot, yes. Okay, yeah, this yeah, is the original pot, as you can see. And now we feel it could go in a bigger pot. So let's see what pot would be right. We have a choice of a rectangular mica or a drum mica. So I'm going to ask Joe to kindly slip it into the rectangular pot to see what it looks like. Hey, wait, watch it. It's like choosing shoes or clothes. You've got to try it. And let's try the mica pot. Uh, the drum. Careful, it might be a bit too high. Drum pots cover a multitude of sins. If in doubt, use a, a drum pot. I think it looks better in the drum. I think so. So we're going to use that drum. There you go. So choice made. So who have we here? Kevin, helping us repot. So as I say, we've always got something to learn from all these other teachers. So let's speak to Kevin and as he does it, we will get his thoughts on repotting. Yeah, so well, it's the first week in March now and we have a greenhouse so we can protect the trees. It's perfect, isn't it? Perfect, perfect timing. You know? Absolutely perfect. All right, nothing um, earlier than that. No, I mean, you know, obviously, yeah, we've done a lot of the deciduous trees, yeah. cleaning the barries out, yeah, fresh new soil in there. Um, they're all starting to shoot. Yeah, we want, we shan't take them out until we've yeah. uh, ended the frost. And also, yeah, we can do All the right. conifers. Because yeah. this is viewed by an international audience, they often wonder, uh, what is the temperature here? Well, we've had a very mild spring. Not spring, a uh, mild winter. February was the wettest on record since records began. And I would say the average temperature must have been around the five or seven. Some nights it went to freezing or minus uh, four or five. I think in January it went to minus eight a couple of uh, early mornings. But generally speaking, our temperatures now today is 10 or 12. So it is almost like spring. So this tree again has not been repotted maybe five or six years. And look at the soil, all the effects of the fertilizer had made the soil black. One of our Chinese drum pots. And let's look at the mycelium. Look at that mycelium. Enough mycelium there. Okay. So obviously, yeah, the, the whole idea of repotting is to uh, is, is to get oxygen back in the soil. Yep. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's nothing but root in there now. So, you know, they start the roots are starting to suffocate slightly, yeah. So, yeah. New pop, new boots and panties. Mm. So yeah, you know what I mean. Let's uh, get some air in there. You can see, yeah. Uh, yeah. What you know, most people don't realize that roots breathe. You know, they but, always think that roots are just to take water up. I mean, I don't know if you've uh, experienced this, Pete. Yeah, but sometimes when I don't particularly like a tree, yeah, I'll come along right, yeah, and I need the pot, yeah, mm. and I'll take that tree out of the pot, yeah, and put it on the side yes, of the nursery. Yes, we have Mm. And then this tree does amazing because mm. it's no longer in ceramics and getting lots of air, you know. Mm. So that's the uh, the trick behind it, getting the air and. But one has to strike a balance because there are these so-called air pots. You know those baskets for growing aquatic plants. Yes, Some people yeah, yeah. use those. We use these uh, trays like this. These trays, these carrying trays. They are ideal for growing trees in. So Fantastic. that lets yeah. air in, yeah. doesn't it? 
I but mean, there pot, comes a point they do need a pot, a pot of some kind. Yes, they, they do, yeah. You because know. the roots find its way into the soil. That's right, yeah. But if you're trying to bring something on, if you put it in an aquatic pot or one of these bread baskets, yeah, you know, the oxygen they get, yeah, all the way around the root system is great for them, yeah, to bring it Maybe, on. you know, that moss trick that I use, because we use moss, moss is yes. light, it's not compressing. That's right. So that yeah. lets the air in as well. Yeah, yeah. You can see this one's not been repotted for a while and it's, uh, it's started to go around the pot, yeah, so that's another reason for doing yeah. it, yeah. So it's just slowly tease it out. Now different people have different preferences for tool. This tool which I've seen made, I could have ordered some for herons as well. This is your favorite repotting tool. It's my favorite tool, yeah, because it's... Say, uh, tell me why. Well, because you can get in there, you know, and do this type of thing. You go in and then you can leave your roots down, yeah, you oh, know what okay. I mean? And it doesn't do a lot of damage, yeah? Whereas Rather you, than the root hook. Yeah, with, with me, yeah, if you get in there with a root hook and then, I mean, obviously some of them are two pronged, you're tearing, yeah, oh. you know? But this way you're teasing apart, yeah? almost like combing your hair. I know my oh, hair okay. always looks untidy, yeah. Yeah, but, <laughs> oh. but that's what it is. You're actually combing the roots out, yeah, you know, rather than breaking them. So that's my favorite tool, yeah, for doing this. Mm. You can just get in there. Because it's something that should be done slowly, yeah. Oh. It's not, not shouldn't be done real quickly, yeah. A smaller tree, obviously, is, uh, mm. you can do it really quick, but this is quite mature, yeah, so you need to be careful about the way you do it. <coughs> See this has gone round, look. Mm. So. And all of this, right, there's no oxygen in it now, yeah, so. And you said you do a technique, yeah, which I was quite intrigued with. We just, drill holes. Just to drill a hole in there, you know? Yeah. You in know, fact, the tree growers, when they grow trees in Kew Gardens, apparently they do that as yeah, well. Yeah. They drill big holes with a Well, I mean, when we had the great storm, Josh, yeah. Josh was telling me that uh, one of the trees came over, yeah? Mm and they decided to pull it back up again. Oh. And they pulled it back up with winches and everything, yeah, you know, just because the root system was still intact. Oh. Put good soil in there, pulled it back up, and it had done the best it had done for about 100 years, oh, you know? I see. So now they, they actually do that, is go do and drill around the bottom of these uh, trees, yeah? So what I actually let do, air in, yeah. You know, I get in and let the air in there, yeah, you know? So, you know, that would try Now, what up. about your thoughts of removing all the soil? Because sometimes it can be very terrifying. Yeah, no, I don't, huh? you know, sometimes with the maples, yeah, I'll, I'll remove everything, yeah, but uh, when I'm doing the conifers, yeah, I usually leave, leave the, some. I usually leave the central core, yeah, okay. in there, you know. Um, but other people absolutely recommend, you know, taking mm. everything out of the root, you know. But uh, I wouldn't do that, I don't think, yeah, you know. I'd always leave some. Yeah. And especially with Yamadori like this one, you know, been collected from the wild right here, you know what I mean? You take it out of that, you put it in, you know, all these brand Akadamas. In fact, you stuff, talk of the you know? soil. If you go in the heathland, this is the sort of this peaty is, soil. This is what it's in. Natural you know? soil yeah, yeah, yeah. you grow in this yeah, soil. Yeah. You know? So I wouldn't take it all, yeah. You know, when I've been collected uh, Yamadori in the past, yeah, I've always left, um, you know, the central core of. Mm. Uh, of soil in there. I mean, you can't get it all out eventually, you know what I mean? But it uh, just helps them survive, yeah, if they've got something of where they were. But the feeder roots are the extremities. Yes, there's nothing in there, you know. That's just supporting roots, isn't it? It's not feeder roots, they're on the ends, yeah. But uh, eventually, yeah, because this is cold, yeah, we'll have to cut all them off, they have to grow new ones, but, uh, you know, they can do that, yeah. But the fact that the roots have gone round and round and this is okay. Yeah, I know, it's okay, it's fine. Now. Right, now I'm going to try and tease it with my hands. Yeah, look. Would you cut all that off through the roots? Yeah, I think I probably would, yeah, you know what I mean? It's not, uh, it's not doing a lot there, yeah, you know. Look at this, look. Look at that whole piece it's here. like it's a gone, hat. Gone round and round. <laughs> Let's clean some of this in here. Get some oxygen going here.
So here's this big larch back from Wisley. This is still a Wisley sign. It's more than 50 years old because it's been growing on the nursery for 38 years. And it was made from a big field grown tree. So that's what it looks like. I'm showing this large forest because this large forest was made back in 1974 when I joined the British Bonsai Association and it had I think seven trees with it and the tallest tree was over a meter high and when I made it it caused a lot of stir because they said who would make a forest that large you know so uh, I came in for a lot of stick but it's always been something I've loved and it's been at the Wisley collection since 1997 when Wisley was first set up and I hate to say it has not been repotted for about 25 or 30 years. All I've ever done is keep transferring it from pot to pot. The last pot came up to this edge so it's put into larger mica pots so the moment of truth will come, although it says 40 years. That sign was made in 19, I would say, 80 something. So you can add another 20 years to that. So this is a genuinely old forest group. The two small trees at the side were added about 10 years ago. And look at the ramifications just from clipping. Now I'm going to ask Joe to show us the state of the roots to show that the trees can still be healthy without regular repotting and I will see what the roots look like after not having it repotted for so so long. Okay, so look at the root on that, well, a lot. Okay, so how much you got to cut off? Almost all. No, not all of it, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm going to be very... Fit it in you know, the pot. The thing is, right, yeah, another sort of uh, four years' time, yeah, you know what I mean? There'll be a... Uh, so I'm only going to take that much off, yeah? Okay. Because we don't want to go too far into it, yeah? Um, then the next time we'll do it, we'll take a little bit more off, yeah, you know? Everything out. But what I'm looking for now is the Nabari, yeah, because obviously I styled okay. this tree. Yes, okay. And I'm looking you for... You want to raise it more? I want to raise it and yeah. show this Nabari, yeah, yeah, here. There could be something you know? underneath that gin as well, isn't Yeah, it? I think so, huh? you know? Okay, good. <coughs> so we've changed the pot so the tree looks different. So this tree hasn't been repotted for about maybe 15 or 20 years and it's a bit pot bound but the roots are still quite healthy and strong. This is my clump style, it lost a few trunks but time we repotted it. Look at the mess of roots. In curve over you just pot. Put in, the, in the soil there, please. Thank you. Cool. 
It's almost like a lady's hair. Yeah. Mine's my hair and my <laughs> young days. <laughs> Mine too. You must be wondering why I'm showing you a copy of this book. This is the Italian version of my first book, Bonsai, the Art of Growing and Keeping Miniature Trees. I brought this out because I can't lay my hands on the English version. I want to show you a tree that is in this book. And this is a very famous Chinese juniper that I've owned since 1974. That is a picture of that tree, front side and back side, and it's in one of the pots that I made. I made that pot in 1968 or 69 when I lived in southeast London in Eltham. And this is how this tree looked in 1984 when I took photographs of this tree for my first book. The reason why I'm showing you this is that I want to trace the history of that tree. I'm now going to take a leaflet, and this is a leaflet we did an exhibition in London for a Japanese cosmetic firm called Kanibo um, Cosmetics. And there's the picture of that tree again in that same pot. And that is a brochure from that exhibition we did. We had geisha girls and it was almost like a Chelsea flower show display. The reason why I'm showing you pictures of that juniper is because I've owned it from 74. That means I've owned it for 50 years. 50 years, five zero. And here's the same tree. It has seen a lot in its time. It's gone uphill and downhill. But at long last, we are going to bite the bullet and going to give it a good makeover. Not styling, but we're going to get it strong again. So this is the self same tree. And Kevin is looking at the roots to see how we can bring it back to health. So we won't touch many of these roots, you know. Just no, I mean, the, we need to get some of the bottom inside. off there, you know. Okay. Because it's like solid in okay. there, you know. Right. So, but we won't cut many okay. of those roots, right. yeah, and we'll just okay. leave them. You know, we're trying to get it back to health. It's yeah. a, okay. The thing is, it's like the weather, yeah. You have to go out and like see what it's like yeah. here before you do it, yeah. And that's what's happening okay. there, yeah. So yeah. we did use a variety of soils, you know, sandy mix in the days yeah. before we could get Akadama, it's all sort of huge and various things in it. Anyway. I thought I'd just show you the progress of some of the trees we potted a month ago. They were potted in the first week in February and kept in this greenhouse. So this greenhouse doesn't freeze. It goes down to say two or three degrees, but it's absolutely fine. So in the space of a month and after repotting, see we put a layer of boss on top of it just to keep the soil damp. And we used predominantly Akadama, pumice, and very little bit of organic in it. So different trees have a different mix. We'll talk about soil another time. And you see how the buds are just bursting out. Even some apparently dead branches have got new shoots coming. So we're going to restructure this tree. Let's move on to some other trees that we repotted. These were done only yesterday. So again, you see the Nibari, we're showing, chance to show them off. And all these lovely trees have been repotted. And because we have so many trees, we don't get a chance to do everything absolutely on time. So this maple already budding into leaf was only done yesterday. But it's still okay, so we're not worried about that. We will show you some more trees that we did last month. All those the shoujos were done last month. And you can see how they're beginning to bud. The worst thing you can do is to take them out 
and leave it in the open exposed to frost because the frost will damage the new leaves. So we will take it out when the fear of frost is completely over. Some more large specimens. Pity the background is not good, but you can see what I'm trying to show you. So you can see all these beautiful new shoots emerging. And you see, we took the opportunity to show all that lovely Nivari. And these little quince, they're also beginning to leaf. So sometimes you may think a twig is dead or dying, but not so. Look at the little green shoots at the end. This is another major root connected maple with an almost turtle back root. And it's like a root connected triple trunk. And this is a tree that one of my American friends sent to me. This was sent by like Interflora, what do you call it? Uh, another company does it, I won't mention its name. So this was a Chinese New Year present, kumquat. More trees we're going to repot, so there's quite a lot of repotting to do. Some trees we do not repot at all. So these lovely junipers, they're still in the original Japanese soil, so we're leaving that for a while. Things that need to be repotted at different angles, we will do. So you can see how green and healthy they are. They have not been exposed to frost and hence they are keeping very green. I hope this gives you some ideas to the sort of trees we have here. This is the black pine that I purchased I think in 1980 probably or 79, it was half the size. The lower branches have died because it never used to get light. So the tree only came up to about there and the trunk was not as thick. And I've always been afraid to go deep into the root. Yeah. So it's just been put in bigger and bigger pots. Yeah, slip potted, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's see what's going on. Yeah, there. yeah. Do you want to see the roots here? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just about to push it out, we'll cut the guy wires, yeah? Let's we'll see what's going on. I think this was done about maybe two years ago. Right. So a lot of roots going to the edges. Look at this. Yeah, new roots coming. Yep. So They're inherently strong trees. Oh Do you God. have much experience of black yeah, pine I mean in this the, country? With the black pine tree, usually what you have to do, right, yeah? It, you need a PhD in candle pinching with them, oh. yeah? Um, but roughly, yeah, what you do is before June go and like break most of the candles off, yeah. Mm. You know, and that makes it back, but you get smaller needles. Then the end of the season, right, you've got to do another cut because they're a double. But I've been letting the tree grow to make it strong. Yeah, yeah. But they're a double flush tree, okay. yeah. So, and they're as strong as hell, okay. you know. So, would you say it's almost like the Scots pine? Not really. It's stronger than the Scots stronger pine. Stronger than Scots yeah, pine? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know. If you keep them healthy, yeah, you know what I mean? You can, and also you can get the needle right down there by doing the correct okay. pinching right. at the right time. Okay. So this needle could be this big, yeah? Mm. And then this tree will look spectacular. Yeah, yeah, see, it's look, already candles. Yeah, they're coming already, yeah. But I did take the candles off last year. That's yeah, why yeah. they're yeah, yeah. only very small candles. If I'd left them, they would be long. They would be massive, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll rub everything off before June. Okay. And uh, okay. we'll get smaller candles. Okay, but it's yeah. a beautiful, I mean, the bark on it, you just can't beat the quality of the... The age. The age of this, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Okay, you've got to be really careful with this, yeah? Okay. Do you I need help? I oh, know, yeah, I do. I remember right. one time... Um, Would you give him... Help? I was in Alcabendish, yeah, you know, Louis Vallejo's yeah. place, and Comster works there, and, I, and it was one of his trees, and I was carving the top there, yeah, and one piece of bark flew off, yeah? And uh, the boys freaked out, yeah? <laughs> they went and got the piece of bark, yeah, and buried it, yeah, so Mario couldn't find it, yeah? I swear to God, that's what they did, yeah? Oh, <laughs> but wait. <laughs> got it. Ooh. Okay, cool. Back down. 
Do you want a turntable? Or? Yeah, can we have a turntable? Joe, thank you. Round, yeah? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful black one. Okay. Smash it. Right. But not with this side, Steve, so don't try yeah. to towards you. You can help count for a while. That one should go to you, Steve, I think. So I'm looking at my first book, Bonsai, the Art of Growing and Keeping Miniature Trees. And on page 149, I can show you that black pine that we are repotting. And I've described in the caption, Japanese black pine, Pinus tangbergei, from my collection. This exquisite tree is over 80 centimeter high, imported from Japan 20 years ago. It says trees like that are not repotted very often, once every four or five years, which is about right. So the tree is quite, quite different from what it is now. Can I just ask you, Kevin, in yeah. the olden days, I mean, Akadama has only relatively recently been available. So what did people do in the old days? We just used potting oh, grit. We used potting and grit and John in this number two. Yeah, that's you right. Know? And that's that's what I used to <laughs> use when I first started, yeah. And then everyone got, you know, started using Akadama, yeah. And then there's so many products now, mm. you know, Fujisan and Kanuma and Kiryu and, you know, there's, mm. there's all sorts, isn't there, you know. Um, but we did all right, yeah, with yes, Japanese and Greek, you know. See, what annoys mm. me is that a lot of people said, you only got to use Akadama, nothing else will do. Yes. Well, what did people do in the past? No, no, you know, yeah. we got by. Yeah. I actually think that obviously the Japanese soils are better. Yeah, it is. You know, but um, we did get by, you know. So the roots are fairly healthy, very healthy. Look good, yeah. Mm. Okay. And if we can trace them back without doing too okay. much damage right. here, because we need some oxygen okay. in this part yep. of the tree, yeah. So it is tough, isn't it? Yeah. So you must be wondering why we spraying the roots, and because. This tree is taking quite a long time to do. We don't want the roots to dry out, and that is the reason for spraying it gently to keep it moist. Peter, just show the people the nibari that's uncovered on okay. there. You know, so it's all natural nibari. That was that was there, yeah. yeah. You know, and now uh, we started mm. to clean it down here, yeah. Mm. And uh, you know, it's this like is, doing archaeology. Oh, it's an unbelievable fun. You know, look at that. Yeah. Proper okay. little treasures. Beautiful. Oh, so we're going to show all that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you know. okay. And look at the mycelium on the surface. Mm. But it's amazing how ignorant some people are. I won't mention names, but I was at Wisley recently and one of the staff thought mycelium was root aphis. He was partly right because you do get root aphis on you pines. You do get root aphis, aphis, aphis yeah, on you pines. Know, you know? But root aphis, you yeah. can tell that they're like little um, ball size, yeah, well, general, two or three millimeter yeah, and diameter. Generally what happens, they stick on the root. Stick yeah, on the root, you know? okay. So you can tell by that, yeah, you know. Yeah, but that is definitely my serum, but no, they can't tell the difference. No, that's my serum. I don't think you need a magnifying glass even to check it over. No. See, all of that, yeah, when you, you know, when you water, 
because that's been slip potted, okay. yeah. And there's no water going into Only this pot. So things. all it's doing, yeah, is yeah, feeding from this area. Yeah. So if we clean all this, yeah, all of this will it become hair root, yeah, yeah. And it'll become a lot more healthy, yeah. You know? So we have to, but it's, uh, it's archaeology, basically, yeah, you have to be very careful, yeah, make sure you don't damage the, the internal, internal part of the root in there. Which is where these come in handy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, okay, sure. Dangerous truth, isn't it? You yes. could kill someone with it. You <laughs> could. <laughs> you could. Oh. Make sure you don't repot with an enemy. No, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> so, in between the repotting, I'm going to just show you trees that have just been done. This is an Itoigawa juniper that I imported from Japan many years ago, 14 years ago. Or was it 17 years ago? 2007. And I've grown it much bigger. So many of the trees have been on the nursery to grow bigger or to improve. That is all natural wood, no carving done to it. Yeah, yeah. Digression. We look at this tree with this at the front because it's leaning nicely. The trunk is bare and open, but if we turn it to the other side. The other side is also nice and it can also be made the front. Maybe leave it to the person who buys it. <laughs> yeah, but also I think the, the beauty in this one is this Sweeping drop branches. Is this drop branch yes. here, you know? Two drop branches. You know? Two drop branches. Yeah. And what happens here, right, yeah, yeah, is if we clean all that, yeah, and show the, the yeah. branch line and uh, then that and, and float that cloud yeah, at the bottom yeah. of that tree. That would, would you do another yeah. level here? Yeah, I would do, yeah. I'd do several levels, yeah. I would turn that into a pad. You can see already, yeah, if yeah. we do this, yeah, mm. you know, yeah, that would be stunning, yeah. But we need to wait until this yeah, gets back to health sure. yeah, to do the work on that, yeah. But it's a stunning old tree. Beautiful. The good root is on the outside, yeah, there's not too much in it. We use Hugo as well. Hugo, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the roots are healthy. Good. Yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah. You know? Just congested. You know? Yeah, it's going to enjoy this for sure. Sphagnum moss. Yeah. Has it been in sphagnum moss? Before? Yeah, to revive it. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's it works. Funny thing, yeah. Doesn't it? It's a good smell coming off it as well. Is it? Yeah. What? Mycelium? Mycelium and, and that earthy smell oh. that you want to smell oh. here, you know what I mean? You know? It's not rotten. No, it's not rotten. No, no. Not putrid. No, not at all. Sweet. And some people now, yeah, I mean, we're talking about sophistications of substrate. And uh, people now, yeah, are, uh, you know, they're putting charcoal in there yeah, to keep the, the well, soil. Well, orchid growers have yeah. always used charcoal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, it's imported direct. Right. <clears throat> Oops. 
again. This is a very large, I think, Japanese pot. I don't know whether tokonami, but possibly tokonami because we used to buy these by the container load. It's lovely. I'll take that one actually. Mm -hmm. That's enough root. Need to scratch it. We'll put more underneath. I it. think we'll put a little bit more underneath yeah, I here. Thought that too. Yeah. I'll just lift that, Chris, and you get another. Yeah, I'm just gonna get these in and then. A little work, yeah. That's enough. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I want that new Nabari to show, yeah. 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 Okay. That's a bit tight. You're going the crossways again? No, I'm ones? just going to go straight across the, the gubbins. That one up, Chrissy. I don't know what I did with the white cards here. You might need to just cut them out and cool. So, this I would say is like 70% academic and about 30% organic. And uh, we are going to pop some more <laughs> sodium in there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people when they're using the Debbie, yeah, yeah. they do this, yeah, yeah, you know? But what I do is what I call vortex chopstick, mm -hmm. yeah? I stick it in there, right, put my finger down, and as you turn it, yeah, you can feel your finger going into the oh, crevices, yeah, you know? So like that, yeah, and it just, you can see it, it just... Mm -hmm. And you can get right every gap here, yeah, every air gap. And it's still loose here, yeah. you're not doing this here yeah, and compacting it again, yeah. You know there's a lot of voids under there anyway. Because yeah, there will be, yeah, but as you water it will fill in, but it's a better way to do it. Take a look. This is what the black pine looked like when I photographed it in 1980, I think it was, because this book was published in 1984 and it was in like a semi cascade pot because I wanted it to go in a deep pot. And here it is, 44 years later, enough to be someone's lifetime. And we're going to restyle it, but it's in a different pot, a very sophisticated Japanese pot. And we've exposed the roots to show the wonderful Nibari. Look at that crusty bark. That is genuine age. And the lower branches were gin some years ago because it didn't get enough light, but we wanted the tree to grow bigger, so that's what we've done. So watch this space, this tree will look different by the end of this year. But we'll get it to revive and resuscitate for a while before we even work on it. So this is the story of this famous black pine. 
1980 2024 several dragon years <laughs>